the if else condition step. I'm going to open up the step finder. I'm going to type in if. I'll see if else condition. Click to add the step. First of all, I really need to set up the data to check against, and this can be passed in from a Google Sheet, a CSV, even via our API. But in this case, I'm going to use the pass in the get data step. I'm going to click not set, insert data, and then select scrape data. Save and close. Next, we need to set the condition to check. I'm going to click on when any of is present. Now I can choose from words, numbers, JavaScript. In this case, I'm going to match a word. I'll just type in axiom. There are other settings, apply rule, for example, but we'll leave you to work those out. You don't need to set them by default. Finally, to set up the condition, reverse condition, I can click on run steps if condition is true to reverse it. Just click the tick box. But I'm going to leave it to true. Now, all I need to do is add the sub steps that I wish to execute if the condition is true by clicking on the add sub step button above the else. Then I click to add the steps that I execute if the condition isn't true in this case. I click on the add sub step button below the else and add in my steps via the step finder. The end run step. Now, this is a very simple step, it does exactly what it says, and it ends a run but in success. And it's a handy step to use, like I am here in an if condition, for example, where you may want to execute a different series of steps and then end your run. I'm going to click end run, insert the step. You can see it's added here at the bottom my if condition. It's going to expand the step, but you of course can't because in fact there's nothing to configure in this step. You just insert it into the correct place in your automation. If I'm working with a Google Sheet and I want to find a specific row to get the data as a variable in my automation, we've got a step to do that. We also have a step that, or a combination of steps that allow you to find a row and then edit that row. Now, um, let me show you first how to find a row. So I'm going to open up the step finder in my automation. I'm going to insert a find a row in Google Sheet step. Below, you can also see the editor row in Google Sheet, but for now, find a row. I've inserted the step. Now I can use the spreadsheet drop down to look for my sheet. You can see it's loaded in the, the sheet with the terms, and I've got that sheet open just behind Axiom, and I'm just circling the values in it. Now, to find the row, I can just enter the value I expect to see in, in it. And I can also pass that value as insert data, but I'm just going to hard code one. Type in product. And you can see there's some settings for exact match and um, value match and mode. I'm going to leave those as they are for now. I can also specify specific columns for the um, step to look in. But it's successfully found, as I can see, the output, the value I wanted to find. So that's how you can find a row. And if I, for example, add an enter text step, you'll see that that row is now, find a row step is now available as a variable inside my um, enter text step. Now I'm just going to delete that. If I wanted to find a row and edit that row, I'd look at the edit a row step. But this step is in fact, you'll see when I add it, is made up of two steps. It adds find a row in a Google Sheet. So first we have to set that up. Again, I'll just select the sheet that I want to find and the term that I want to find. Then it's found the row. And next I can um, write to that sheet and specify that row. So if I scroll down again to the sheet that I'm using, 
set that make sure the um, sheet name is also set. Then I can select the data I want to insert. Let's say the all the interact data. But you'll see the right options add to existing. I've already got inserted there the number of the um, row, and we've got the column A already set there by default. So the data will be written to A3. And that's how to find a row and then write a new value to that row. The receive data from another web app step. I'm going to open up the step finder. I'm going to type in rec, and you can see the step. I'm going to click and add it. Now, this step allows you to post data and trigger an automation via an API request. Very simple to set up. There's not much you need to do in Axiom, in fact. We provide your endpoint to send your request to in the instructions. We also, if you follow the link to our documentation, we'll help guide you on how to set up that request. I'll just quickly talk you through it. Now, the request will need to include a key, and that will be your API key. I'll show you how to get that shortly. The name of your automation, so it's very important, the name of your automation, that will need to be included, and of course, any data you want to send. And that is strict. It needs to be in a 2D array or it will not work and you'll get an error message. Now, back to the automation. Um, to find my API key, if I just go back to the desktop for a second, you can get your API key from here. I'm just circling around the button with on the pointer and show API token. Back to the automation. I've clicked and expanded it. Okay, a little bit about um, testing this step. You don't have to set up your um, API request before you can test it. You can, in fact, use some test data, and this is our preferred method. We recommend you scaffold your bot, or automation rather, and use some test data before setting up your post request. I'm gonna copy and paste this example data in, and you'll see below an output has been made with three columns. It's in a 2D array, like I mentioned, it has to be in a 2D array format. You can then customize that data to your use case so that your data looks more real when I'm testing your automation and scaffolding it out. If I just, if you, <coughs> if you just look there, and if you just look there in column A, where the point is circling, you can see the data has been changed. So you can completely customize that. And of course, that test data is then available in any step you can pass data into. Okay, that's how to use the receive data from another app step. It's very simple to set up. And if you're curious, you can see the um, status of your runs in the run reports if you if you want to know if they've been successfully triggered from um, your post request. Worth noting, um, we do return um, when the request has been, we, if the connection's been successful, we do return a link to the automation that's been triggered so you can open it up via the API. We also return error messages that will tell you how to fix any errors in your post request. Thank you. Automating date pickers can be tricky. So we've created a date picker step to help you. But before you use this step, you should always try and use an enter text step to directly input the date into a field. It's the simplest way. However, for example, on page, you can see that I'm unable to input the um, date directly into the field, but it does open this date picker, which I can use the date picker step to automate because the date picker step is designed to work with date pickers that display a month, have toggle steps to go through the months, allow you to select a date. Let me explain in more detail. So I'm going to open up Axiom. I'm going to add the date picker step using the step finder. Now we need to select the month. That's the month displayed in the date picker, then we may need to 
select the month change button. That's the button that cycles you through the months. Then we need to label the month or input the month we want to change it to and the day we want to change it to. Let me show you how to do that. So this can be tricky. Browser automation can be tricky and date pickers are the trickiest thing. So a little bit of patience and we'll get you there using this step. So I need to select a month. But somehow I need to open up the date picker. Sometimes they stay open, sometimes they don't. For this one, I worked out if I open it whilst um, I have Axiom expanded and I press select, I can actually choose the month. So we want to choose the month displaying because what this step does is scrape the current month. Press complete. And then we want to do the same trick again to select the change button because what we want to do is get the step to click that button until we get to the month that we want it to be. Now I'm going to tell the step by inputting the month I want it to be in the change month to field to December 24. Now it's important that you enter it in the same format that is displayed in the date picker which is showing month and year. That will vary for different date pickers. For example, on Amazon, I think they just show you the month. I'm not sure. Um, then add the day, I'm going to do the 25th. Now that should be able to change the date picker mix. Let's have a quick run in the cloud to see if that worked. So we should see the train line site open up in Axie. I, mean, I added a, a click to open the pop up with the date picker. So you'll need to do that first and then to the date picker. Now we should now see it start to click, scroll the month. We want it to stop on December. It's just checking November, no match. December, is there gonna be a match? There should be, and it's clicked on 25th and set the day. Now you may need to add additional steps to complete the automation, but you can see the date picker step work to treat. And that's how you can automate the date picker using the step. If I want to go back to the previous page, I can open up the step finder and use the go back to the previous page step. I enter back into the step finder, click and add the step, and you can see I'm just circling it with the mouse pointer. It's a very basic step. It'll do exactly what it says on the tin and it'll just take you back to the previous page. The trigger webhook step. Now, on screen, you can see I've got Axiom open above Zapier. This is because I want to show you an example of um, posting data from Axiom via webhook to Zapier and how to just set it up. Okay, so I've got a get data step that's going to scrape data from the URL. That's already set up. Let me now add my trigger webhook step. So I've opened up the step finder. I'm going to type in trig and then click on tri trigger webhook. Now you can see the step is very simple to set up. I've got an endpoint and a payload. Now, first of all, the endpoint. Endpoints will be find, found in the app you're trying to, to post to. And I'll just show you in this, this example of Zapier where I can find my endpoint. Usually they're very well um, flagged to the user. Now I'm just going to copy it out of here. And this is where you add your endpoint. So it's as simple as that, cut and paste. Now I'm um, setting up your payload. So you can pass your data straight into the um, payload via the token system. And we've only got one token because we've got one single step scraping data. And if I ran that now, it would post that data into Zapier. I would then need to format that in Zapier, but I would have the data there and Zapier has good data formatted steps. So that's how simple it is to trigger a webhook and send some data. Now, you can enter valid JSON here and can construct your own payload. You can also use the JavaScript step if you wish to create something more elaborate. Get a list of links from the bot's current page. I'm going to open up the step finder and search for the step. I'm going to click and add it. Now, all that's left to do is set up the step. It's pretty simple. Press select. 
click on your first link, scroll down a little, click on the second link and the next until a repeating pattern is established. Press complete and you've selected the links you'll see in output preview. If you have a pager that you need to select, scroll to the bottom of the page where the page can be found, select the next button, press complete. Now set the amount of results you want or select all. For a faster scrape, it's best to set an amount. Now there are some configure scraper op options. Wait time between scrolls, that, that can be used to vary the time between the wait as the page scrolls. We use a longer wait to allow content to load in. We find if the page scrolls too quickly, content won't load it. And that's mainly on lazy loading pages. Number of attempts when results not found. Again, we slow the bot down and we get it to retry to try and ensure data accuracy. So we have two retry attempts to make sure we've not missed any data. But you can speed up the bot by reducing this to zero or one. You can also specify a minimum wait time before scraping and a page number to start to start from. And there are a couple of other options below. If you want to read more about configuring your scraper, check our documentation. Lastly, all the data is available to output, meaning you can write the data to a Google Sheet or into other output steps or for example, enter text steps. Roll over element. I'm going to click, open up the step finder, I'm going to type in roll and click and add the step. It's very easy to use. You just click select and choose the element you wish to roll over. It's good for when you want to trigger a hover menu to scrape a link or reveal some data to scrape. Make your select selection and then press complete. You also have the option of clicking custom using custom selectors, the text contained in the button, and passing in a value to select from data. Once you're done, simply press complete to set up the step.